and welcome to Thunkable's Intermediate App Walkthroughs. In this series, we are going to build and explain some really cool apps, and as we explore more complicated apps, we don't want the videos to get longer. So instead, we're going to give you the app file and walk you through how it works. It should only take a few minutes, not a few hours, and then afterwards you can remix the app on your own. So in this walkthrough, we're going to explain how to build an anonymous chat app. To get started, let's click on this link in the description of the YouTube video. And when you click on the link, it should open up the Aloha app. Aloha, uh, this is an anonymous chat app that was built by our friend Albert. So let's see how this app is set up. At the top, we have an animation component, and this is what it should look like on your mobile device. And animations are a great way to give your apps a next level look. And if you have any questions on how to use them, check out our animation tutorial. Uh, and a link for that can also be found in the video description. So many links. Uh, and if we look at the animation's height and width, you can see that these have been adjusted to make this animation this exact size. One important thing to note is that the animation component is actually just this little message icon, and the text that says Aloha is actually the background image for the screen. So if you're going to remix this app and you want to change the background, just click on Home Screen over here and click the X where it says Background Picture. And right under the animation, we have a row component, which is kind of like an organizing container. You can put things in it and then move them around on the app screen. And if you don't know how to use them and want to know how to use them, you know, things like row components and column components, we also have a link for that in the description of it. Yeah. Uh, so the first component in the row is the text input box, and that's where you're going to write your text. And the second component is the send button. And when we click this button, it's going to send whatever you write in the text input to the label. So this is actually going to be the button you push to send your message. And we have a few labels down here, and they're also being organized in a container, uh, a column component. And these labels are where we are going to display the messages. And each time we write a new message and click send, the older messages will just move down to the next label. So this is how we're going to see what messages were sent previously. But eventually, you know, we're only going to have five labels, so after five messages, they're going to disappear. And at the very bottom, we have a notification that just lets the user know that anything they write can be viewed by anyone with the app. Uh, so that's always good to leave your users little helpful messages or or treats if you can put in snacks or something. Uh, let's go to the block section. So the blocks for this app will take a few minutes to explain. Uh, these orange blocks are called variable blocks. And variable blocks are kind of like placeholders for things that will change in your app. So what does that mean? So for example, in the messaging app, you don't know what your friends are going to write or what you're going to write. So we're basically saying that each message is an unknown and we're just going to use a variable to be a placeholder. So to create one of these blocks, just to get them out, uh, just go to the variable drawer, and you're going to grab the first block and drop it in, and then in the drop-down menu, we're going to select the cloud option. So remember, variables are like placeholders, and by selecting cloud, we are saying that whatever information we label as a variable, it's going to get stored in the cloud as that variable. So by default, these cloud variables are hosted on Thunkable's Firebase account, but you can always open up and connect your own app to your own Firebase account if you want to do that. Uh, now, we already created a variable block for each of these five labels in the app, and all we did to do this is we just wrote in message, the word message, and then number. And then again, these are just placeholders to save whatever text is in the labels. So what does this block do? This block explains what happens when the share button is clicked. And this is where the variables come in. So I wrote this out because I thought it would be easier to explain. So when you write in a message, and again, we're just going to write the message hi, and we click send, these blocks are basically telling your phone to store this message and give it a name. And it's just going to store it as a variable. And the variable's name is going to be message1. So next, what happens after it's been stored as message one? These blocks say every time a variable is changed. Basically, all that means is that you've hit the send button. So these blocks say, when you hit the send button, you are going to update the text of the labels. And you're basically going to make the variable the new text of a label. So again, we had hi, we hit the send button, it gets stored as message one, 
And then these blocks are saying, take that message and store it as the text of a label. So I drew a little Aloha app, right? This is where we wrote hi, we hit send, it's gonna store, and then it, the text is going to go right here. So this is where it gets stored. And I'm just gonna write that in, I'm just gonna write in hi. Great. So now I'm gonna write in hello. And I'm gonna hit the send button again. Basically the process starts all over. Hello gets saved as a variable, and we know that that variable has to move down here. So what happens to hi? Well, it's pretty simple. When we hit send, this becomes a new variable. And we're gonna save this as message two. And then from the blocks combinations, we're basically saying set labels to text to message two. So then we're gonna go all the way back up here. Oops, sorry. This becomes hello and hi goes over here. And every time you hit send, this is gonna keep happening. And so all of the messages are just going to move down the line until they're deleted. And that's how this app works. Now there's just one more thing to explain. Every time we click the send button, the share button, we need to tell the chat input to set the text to zero. That just means that every time we hit send, if we wrote something in the text input, it's gonna disappear. And that's the final part of this app. If you have any questions, please let us know, and thanks for thunking.